hackers can easily take control of a machine if they can find the right flaw to exploit. There are many tools specifically designed to find and attack these flaws and ultimately take over and cause chaos. You're going to see how a hacker can gain full access to a victim machine in the simplest way possible. Step 1. Scanning In front of us, we have a machine that we would like to attack. It's accessible via this IP address. So, you may be wondering, how do hackers even know where to attack from? This is where scanning comes into play. Scanning involves probing a network or system to gather information about its structure, services, and potential vulnerabilities. Just like a burglar casing a building, a hacker scans for weaknesses in a target system. There are various scanning tools available, and one popular choice is Nmap. Nmap allows us to discover active hosts, open ports, and services running on those ports. By understanding the target's network topology, we can pinpoint potential entry points and vulnerabilities. I have created an entire video on Nmap if you want to learn more about the tool. We start by running Nmap to discover all the open ports on the server to see what potential entry points we have. As you can see, we have many exposed ports on the machine. Maybe some of them are vulnerable, maybe some of them are not. After the initial scan, we want to pay special attention to the banner information or service version that is often disclosed by the target system. So, we run Nmap again, and this time we specify that we want to get deeper information about the services running on the ports. This might take some time, so I want to do only the first port, which is port 21. As a result, we can see that the service is VSFTPD version 2.3.4. Now, armed with the knowledge that we have, we go to the next step. Step 2. Research once we confirm the presence of VSFTPD and its version, we refer to publicly available databases or security resources that catalog known vulnerabilities associated with specific software versions. In the case of VSFTPD, from the get-go, just from a quick research on Google, we find that this specific version of VSFTPD has a known vulnerability named Backdoor Command Execution, and it even has a script available that can exploit the vulnerability. Apart from looking online, we can use a tool on our Kali machine named Searchsploit. We give the name of the service and optionally the version, and let it look for some known scripts. We can see in the results that we find the same backdoor command execution exploit that we found on Google. What's noticeable is that it's mentioned twice, and one of the results contains the word Metasploit. This means that we can use the tool called Metasploit to perform this attack which makes it easier for us. Metasploit is a versatile open source tool used in cybersecurity to find and examine weaknesses in computer systems, networks, and software applications. It provides a range of ready-to-use features for identifying and exploiting vulnerabilities, making it an essential resource for penetration testers. In other words, Metasploit makes our job easier by simplifying tasks related to vulnerability assessment and exploitation. Step 3. Preparing the attack. Now that we know what attack we are going to execute, let's prepare our attack environment. So let's fire up Metasploit. And once we have Metasploit running, we search for the exploit that we talked about earlier. We use the command search to look for an exploit, and we add VSFTPD to see what Metasploit has in store for us for this particular service. Perfect we find the vulnerability that we are looking for. Now, we type the use command, and we type either the number one since the exploit is has the ID one, or the name of the exploit itself. Now that we have told Metasploit that we want to use the exploit, we just need to perform some configuration for the exploit to work. We do that by typing show options and seeing what needs to be done. We can see that from all the configurations needed, only the R hosts and R port are required, which is the IP address of the victim and the port of the service on the victim machine. The port is correctly configured because it's 21 and we just need to configure the host. So we type set R hosts and the IP address of the victim. Before we move on, I just need you to keep this in mind. Hacking someone without authorization from the owner 
will have serious legal consequences, potentially leading to imprisonment and fines. It is crucial to refrain from exploiting vulnerabilities without explicit permission. Instead, I strongly advise you to report any identified vulnerabilities to the owner. This will not only contribute to making you gain reputation, but also offers the opportunity to earn money or bounties. At this point, there's only one thing left to do, and I think you already know what it is. Step four, launching the attack. The challenging part is over. The work has been done. The only thing left to do is to type the exploit command and let the magic happen. Metasploit launches the attacks and then informs you that the attack was successful and tells you that you gained a shell on the machine. What's even better is that the user that we compromised on the machine is the root user. In other words, we have become the admin of the machine. We can use our shell to execute whatever command we want. We can look at any file we want. We can look at the sensitive files on the machine. Step five, chaos. Now that we have took full control of the machine, we are able to do anything. We are able to exfiltrate data. We are able to do anything we want to the website. So I just decided to completely destroy the machine by deleting everything on it. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Using the command rmtacrf, I just initiated the deletion of everything on the system. When looking at the web server hosted on the victim machine, you can see that it's slowly dying because of the files being deleted in real time. And that is how a hacker can take over your machine. You seem to be a fan of pen testing since you're still watching. So here is another web application pen testing video if you want to learn how to become a hacker yourself.